Good morning, everyone. Facebook, YouTube, I hope you guys are doing amazing. Uh, today we got Marty Grisanti, Ronald Walker, and we might have Gabe Rodarte join us here in a little bit. He's running a little bit late, but uh, we're excited. I hope you guys are following us on YouTube. I hope you're following us on Facebook, our podcast, on, uh, on iTunes, and other places. Today, Marty, we are going to be talking about our cold call systems, what we've done to scale up cold calling and get successful, some tips, um, some of the tricks with cold calling, things to look out for, and how to really get started in the cold call game. Because guys, real estate investing is about talking to individuals, right? It's about talking to people. It's about working out agreements. It's about coming to uh, you know deals with sellers and buyers and mobile home park owners and commercial buildings and everybody, right? So Marty, how you doing today, man? I'm good, man. I'm doing real well. This is a, a great topic. It's uh, of course, top of my mind, Ronnie, yep. you know that it's important to our company. I know it's important to yours. And uh, I think a lot of people are going to love this because they've heard of cold calling. I know some people were not even sure what cold calling is, but we've gotten a lot of feedback on cold calling and uh, today's the day that we really dive in. So I'm excited, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, if, uh, if you guys are watching, we, we get, uh, I get personally a lot of questions about what, what are we, what are we looking to do, right? Like, how do you set it up? Who should I call? What list should I pull? What do I say on that first cold call? Like, People, when they're reaching out, it's it's a lot from marketing. And then how do I actually accomplish it? These are, what's up, Mark? How you doing, man? Hey, guys. How you doing? Um, I get a lot of, I get a lot of questions, bro. Like I get just from how do you set it up? How do you be most effective? How do you delegate? Um, and what that looks like. Because because let's be real, like talking to people, getting leads is one of the first steps. And sometimes it's, sometimes it's the hardest thing to do, right? Like it's the hardest thing to do. So um again we're talking about cold calling so marty i want uh actually mark i don't know how much cold calling you're doing bro but i'm glad you jumped on here because this dude is the system master in making sure that things get pushed through and part of cold calling is the system creation 100 so mark how you doing man why don't you why don't you give us a little intro bro hey i'm doing well i'm doing very well um yeah so yeah cold calling um I, I have it really set up, automized, uh, systematic for, you know, mainly Podio for uh, my VAs. So I have it set up in there. So when they, uh, especially follow-up phone calls, and I mentioned this several times, like uh, how many people you've talked today, you pitch, about 70% of them, you know, they don't move ahead, but 70% end up coming anywhere between four to six months so we have to have a good system to follow up and cold call those leads back so what we do is we just set it up uh, for a long-term follow-up and then on my uh in my podio uh every day it comes up as today's calls and then just go ahead and call call those uh callers back that's a uh, really the good system how i do for my vas but yeah cold calling is great um also i always tell people um, when you're getting ready to do cold calling is, you know, call a, pick up the phone and call a buddy first and warm up. It's just like, you know, the professional, uh, you know, sports players, you know, tennis players, basketball, they're always warming up before they start making those calls. So pick up the phone, call buddy, or if your buddies are all tied up, you know, jump over onto like one of the, you know, the FISBO websites and just call some sellers for sale by owner, uh, to warm up a little bit. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, all right, Marty. So cold calling, man, when, when you're jumping in, you're getting started. And you're getting ready to reach out. I mean, why cold calling over other channels, right? Let's start there. Like, why why would you decide to jump into cold calling? And why do you think it's most effective? Yeah, great question. You know, for me and my partner, Matt, and our, our company here, cold calling was just natural to us because we had spent eight years cold calling. So we were, that's what we did. We were sales ninjas over the phone selling advertising. And uh, if you know anything about selling advertising, nobody really wants it, right? So you, you really got to bang on doors and take a lot of no's to get to the yes. And that's where we got the aha to go, why don't we take what we're doing at our company where we were working and use this because we had started real estate and we started doing real estate investing, we started doing a little wholesaling, some flipping, we were buying some houses, but we didn't have our full bodies in the water. We wanted to just jump right in. So 
it was more of a, this is what we know and we don't really know anything else and we're decent at it. Let's, let's just go right in and start this for just real estate a hundred percent. But for us, it's, we like to make sure that what's the best way or the quickest way, I guess, what's the, the most effective way to get in touch with the owner of the property? You know, you could mail, you could text, but you could knock on doors. But what we found is that, you know, taking that phone and picking it up and dialing and then getting that owner right then and there, we had a lot of success with. So that's why we started and, and continue to cold call. Dude, that's so good. I remember um, about seven years ago, I was spending, I was spending two grand a week on direct mail. And, uh, and I mean, it just felt like writing this check, another, another thing hits the, hits the credit card. Another thing hits the credit card. And yeah, you have, you have stuff coming in and the leads are really good from direct mail, but you call them and then people are, you know, cussing you out and you're like, yeah, I'm looking to sell, setting an appointment. And before you know it, eight grand is gone, right? Before you have a, have a deal. And, and then you might, you might have three deals on the table and you sign them and then it takes 30 days to close. And what happens is you're two months in and you're 20 grand out and you might have three deals on the table, but you haven't, you haven't realized any money, right? This literally happened. This, this has happened to me a long time. So when I was thinking about it, when I first got into cold calling, I was not a cold caller. I did not want to do that. Right. I was the opposite of you, bro. Right. I was like, screw cold calling people. I don't want to get yelled at all day. And what I realized is once I skip traced numbers, right, I, I pulled addresses, which I was already doing. I was already paying money on data pulling. And then I was direct mailing them. But that was my only time touching base with them. So I, I decided, man, I need a way of lowering my cost and increasing my response. And what I realized is that cold calling is an investment in my energy and my team's energy. But if we called, we increased from like a one, two, three percent response rate on postcards to like a 12 percent response rate when you talk to the people who answer and who you're working with from a cold call perspective. And we didn't have the reoccurring cost of having to mail the same guy seven times at 39 cents a postcard or a dollar for for an actual letter that we were doing. And so. When I started cold calling seven years ago and I started adding that, I had to take the approach of, man, this is drastically lowering my, my cost per deal and the speed from when I spend money to when I make money. And so when I implemented it years ago, it was like, I have to figure this out so I can get from the time I spend money to the time I make money. I wanted to shorten that from 60, 75 days to under 25, right? And that allowed the money that I spent to get in a, to get a return on that super quick. So, so man, I, I love that your story that you started in there. And I think all channels are good, but that's one of the, that's one of the things I learned in cold calling is, man, you get to spend money once on skip tracing for numbers. And then you can call that guy as many times as you want, or that you're paying someone to do. And it's, the cost effective side outside of texting, which I would say texting even costs more than cold calling. Um, if you're doing it yourself, cause you got a paper text message, but guys, it's a, it's a great way to do that. Mark, pull up, uh, pull up that comment for us. No, it's somebody just listening to marketing. I'm trying to uh, figure out how to remove it. Oh, okay. No worries. That's all no worries. it is. No big deal. Um, cool. So, so cold calling, I like to, I like to say, and Marty, I want to, I want to get your, your thing on this. It's, it's kind of like the intro to becoming a salesman, right? It's it's kind of like the it's like the the walking through fire when you're getting started, right? Would you agree with that or not? Or where should someone who gets into real estate, if they decide, you know what, I'm I want cold calling to be my channel, why should they choose cold calling? And two, what is the next step? Should they hire somebody right away? Should they do it? Should what what does that look like? Yeah, it's great. It's a great question. Cold calling is so critical, in my opinion, and it's one of the most important parts of any company, truthfully, if that's a part of your sales strategy, because it's the first introduction to your company. 
that cold call, right? So I always tell my sales associates, my consultants, right? Because cold calling on a high level has kind of got a bad, it's, it doesn't have the best branding, right? Cold calling, you know, really what you are is you are giving the best first impression to our company. And that's what we want is we want to make a great first impression. And we believe we can with a cold call. And it doesn't have to be cold. It can be warm, right? We try to make these cold calls warm calls. And we do that based on a couple different things. You know, number one is we like to do it based on the way that we're interacting, the, the way that we're just changing up our tone, our, you know, we're, I always tell my, my, call, my callers to stand up while they're dialing. I want them smiling when they're dialing. I want that to be so when someone picks up for that first time, although they may have said their introduction two or three times, I want that to be like, oh my God, that's the first time that this person's ever heard it. So I want you to knock their socks off with that introduction. So I'm very much a big believer in cold calling just in how important it is. But yeah, the other thing is why would someone want to go and start cold calling is because it's for me, you can take very quick action at it, right? So I like action. I like to get on there and start making something happen and just trying to will my way to a lead. And right. you can't really do that with a, a postcard, right? You can't really do that with a text, you know, because you have to get them to respond on a call. You know that there's going to be a response because they picked up, right? So it's a little bit, you know, nuanced, but there's a lot of differences. And I think the most, probably the best way to get in touch with the owner is picking up the phone and calling. I love that. I love that. Mark. I want to ask, actually, I want to ask you, Ronnie, because um, I know you uh, and the master, both you guys are, this is a great topic for you guys. So I should be asking you guys the questions because you guys are the kings at uh, cold calling. I know, Ronnie, uh, you have several videos that you posted up on our uh, YouTube Power Play page. So highly recommend if anybody wants to watch Ronnie do some cold calling, uh, jump over to the YouTube and you can kind of see that. It's good, great, great stuff. But, you know, um, Ronnie, like, What's it, tell me a little bit like when you start cold calling somebody and you're reaching out to somebody and they're giving you like, why are you calling me type of situation, like a negative energy? How do you turn that into a positive conversation to kind of keep that seller on the call? Yeah, it's a great question. So when you're when you're calling and someone turns, <clears throat> you know, uh, opening line, um, you got to remember when I'm when I'm cold calling someone, I'm interrupting them right? Like I'm interrupting them. And, and when you get a call randomly from a number you don't know, like think of it from, from our side, right? When you get a call, it's like, who's this? What you're immediately skeptical. And so when you talk to them, when I talk to them, my initial goal is to tell them why I'm calling and disarm them, right? Is, Hey, and I like people like their names. So, so the way that I do it is, Hey, is this Jim, right? Hey, Jim, Hey, is this Jim, blah, 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 whatever that looks like. And I try to address him directly. And then I, and then I tell him who I'm, Hey, my name is Ronald Walker. I'm calling about your house. That's how I start everyone. That's how I train my cold callers to do it. Hey, is this so-and-so, whatever name you see on the screen, I'm calling about your house. Okay. What's this about? Or, Hey, I'm not interested. No problem. You don't want to sell. Nope. And you get off or, Hey, would you be interested in selling that property? And I go right away. A lot of individuals want to explain why they're doing something instead of just getting to the point. I like to just jump to the point. You know, people who tend to portray more confidence to the marketplace are people who don't explain themselves. So it's just, Hey, Jim, this is Ronald Walker. I'm calling about your house. Okay. What about it? I was wondering if you'd be interested in selling that property. No. Okay. So you're saying you've never, you're not thinking about selling at all. Nope. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Right. If it goes positive. Hey, Jim, this is Ronald Walker. I was calling about your house. Cool. One, two, three main street. I usually say the address. Um, would you be interested in selling that thing for the right price? Okay, cool. Do you have an asking price in mind? And you just, you just lean right in, right? Hey, do you have an asking price in mind? No, I was hoping you'd make me an offer. Okay, cool. Why don't you catch me up to speed on what you've tried to do? And then you just open up that conversation and then you turn it into questions. 
here's the thing. Once you get past the introduction on the call, that first hump of the introduction, they're skeptical. There's a thing called RDRs. Okay. An RDR is what's called a reactionary defense response. Everybody's experienced this. You walk into a bookstore, you walk into Barnes and Noble and they say, Hey, can I help you? Nope. Just looking, right? It's a, it's, it's a reactionary response. Even if you are there for a very specific reason, right? I'm getting this book. Where's this section? Your first response is reactionary. The best, the best ones, the furniture stores, how many guys walk into a furniture store and you just, they're attacking you. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So, so you protect yourself and that's what people are doing on cold calls too, is, is they're protecting yourself. So you just want to get over that initial hump. Once you get to the hump and you get over that with, Hey, I'm interested in buying your property at blank and they open up, then you, you have three things that you are doing from that point on. You're not talking about anything else and you're not doing anything but three things you're asking questions about the property and their situation you are restating what they're saying okay you're restating what they're saying so if they're like well i've been thinking about oh it sounds like you've been thinking about this for a while right you're re-summarizing it so they hear that you're listening and then the third thing is you're saying anecdotal stories you're sharing stories on how to overcome their resistance. Those are the only three things you're doing. You're asking questions, you're re-summarizing, and you're sharing stories. And then all you're doing is asking, okay, cool. What would you sell it for? If I offered you $72,000, would you take that? Should we put this property in the contract today? Right? You're asking questions, you're summarizing what they say, and then you're sharing stories to get through resistance. And if you can do that, you can get yourself to a deal or you can get your cold caller that you're training to get to the point where they can say, you know what, Ronnie, you need to talk to Ronnie or you need to talk to AKA acquisition manager. That dude's a freaking badass. All right. You need to talk to him because he does this all the time. So let me set you up with a call. And once I get a call set up, he's going to be able to help you be able to buy this property because I think he wants it. And then boom, they set it as a lead. But it's, it's questions, it's summarizing what they say, and then it's quick stories. And that story could even be, hey, let me set you up for someone else. And then once you get there, that now is a lead. But those are the things you're doing from a cold call. And what I train my team, and when I hire cold calls directly, I do it. The other way is you can manage third-party cold callers once you understand what that looks like. And then you just communicate what you expect. Um, Marty, I want to turn that over to you, man. On a on initial side, that opening line, getting over the hump. Um, what do you do, bro? Yeah, and I think what Ronnie said is really good. You know, you really want to ask questions once you get to that initial right. But you're asking questions, and you're when you're re, when you're restating or mirroring in a way. You know, Ronnie also kind of mentioned this you're, in the way you're labeling the problem that they may be having. Sounds like that's been a problem for you. So is that is that been causing any personal problems in your life? Right. You know, at this point, you can really. They're on the phone still. Right. So once you get through that initial, they're on the phone with you and it's you and them. It's completely your own conversation. And right. And now you're. You're in the uh, you're in the you're in the, the mode of taking in information from them. So you need to be number one, really just into listening on that point. So you got to be a really good listener. The best salespeople are the best listeners. So excellent, Ronnie. One of my things that we do is and we don't like to overthink it is we just like to call and I'm assuming it's Bobby. Hey, Bobby, it's Marty. How are you doing? Like I'm a long lost friend that they forgot about. Hey, Mark, it's Marty. How you doing today? Hey, Mark, it's Marty. How are you? You know, and I like to play around, right? It's cold calling. It's not rocket science. It's not brain freaking surgery. Have fun, you know, have a little fun while you're doing it. But yeah, I, I just make it real simple. I'm just assuming, hey, Bobby, it's Marty. How are you? Uh, good, Marty. I don't. Yeah, Marty with Upstate Home Buyers. I was just giving you a call about the property at 123 Main Street. 
I was just making sure. Is that still something you're interested in selling? And they may have not. You know, and again, I'm assuming that they're interested in selling. You know, and so you you come at it like a different way. And again, not every way is going to get them to go, yes, I want to sell to you right now, right then and there. But you can kind of play with it and kind of see what the best. But yeah, at any given time, I think one of my favorite lines is just the way I, again, because what works for me is going to be different than what works for Ronnie, right? Ronnie's not going to be able to do what Marty does. And I'm not going to be able to do it what Ronnie does. But I like to just get on there and be quick. Hey, hey, Mark, it's Marty. I was just calling you. I was just curious. Are you still interested in selling your property at 123 Main Street? It's good. And we'll see what happens from there. <laughs> and then we'll go from there. I love that. What's so who wants to uh, jump in here and answer Ken, and Ken's question? You want to handle that one, Ronnie? So I was pretty consistent for like 60 days. Then one day a landlord ripped me a new one. Afraid of the phone. Got to get back into it. So Ken... I actually love that you put that there because one, every single person on the planet that has made cold calls deals with this. And what he did when he ripped you a new one, he's frustrated, right? And so this is really, um, it challenges your conviction someone rips you a new one and you really offend somebody, not only can it make you feel rejected, I felt this way, right? But it can also be like, man, I don't know if I'm wanting to call the next person. Like, do I really believe in this, right? Do I really believe this is the right thing? And it challenges your conviction. And so one of the things I like to say, and I like to tell people is, one of the things that cold calling does there's a guy I've been listening to lately. This is not my phrase, but he's been listening to. He says, the work works more on you than you do on it. And what he means by that is when you're cold calling and when I'm cold calling, I'm developing traits as an individual that I otherwise didn't have. And the main trait outside of the skill of sales is courage. I'm developing courage by calling someone I don't know and grit of just plowing through it. And so it's natural. It's normal for something bad to happen and you to get out of the game. But the longer you're out of the game, the less you're productive and the less results you're going to get. So the quicker you can get back in and you can get a win, man, think of, think of when you win. You win and then you win again and then you win again. Man, I've had days where it's like, boom, I got one contract. Boom, I got two contracts. Boom, I got three contracts. It's like, boom, this is awesome, right? The whole day is amazing. I walk upstairs and tell my wife, I'm like, yo, we got three contracts, right? And you're like on a roll. But then all of a sudden, somebody calls you on another deal and it's like so-and-so canceled. And you're like, and you die, right? Emotionally, you just completely implode. And the rest of your day is shot. And it's, it's, it's that momentum that you create by having success. And so what you want to do is you want to just let water be off a duck's back, man. It hits you. Take a second. All right, that sucked. That was just him. He must be having a bad day. That has nothing to do with me. I'm calling to try to get results. And, that's, and what it does is it works on you. It makes you a better business owner, a better salesman. Uh, you can get through the pain. They talk about if if you want to collapse under pressure, then your life is going to be miserable, right? Like if, if you can't handle pressure, life is full of pressure. This business is full of pressure. Entrepreneurship is full of pressure, right? It that And if you are going to collapse under pressure, that's a great way to be miserable. And so you just choose. You know what? I'm not going to be miserable. I'm going to handle it. I'm going to take a minute readjust and jump back in. And so, man, I highly encourage you get back in the game because once you get a success, dude, it'll catapult you. It could be, it could be 10,000 bucks. It could be 20,000 bucks. It could be even more than that. And so that, that would be my recommendation. Yeah. yeah I, I, would I, say this, I would say this. Sorry, Mark. I was just going to say, you remember that forever. This, the, that person already forgot after he hung up with you. So you remember this. I don't know when this happened to you, but I can tell you, you've remembered this and you'll remember this for a long time. It seems this guy already forgot, right? So he ripped you on. Good, good, good. He forgot as soon as he hung up. And this is something that stuck with you. 
right? So don't let this guy stop you from reaching your goals, right? Don't let this one landlord stop you from reaching what you want, okay? Because what matters is what you want, not what they say. Because that no, I love no's. Because then it gets me closer to the yes, right? Because then it, that's how you get that momentum that Ronnie's talking about, right? So you got you to gotta realize that, hey, it's going to happen. And when it does, that's good. Because the next one, you deserve it when they lay down and go, yeah, take my house, right? Just we want to get rid of it. But you have to do, you have to take the punches to deserve that one though. Yep. Okay. So anyway, that's, that's good. There, stuff. If, that's, uh, if, that's if I might uh, kind of talk a little bit to that a little bit more. There's a concept I learned about two months ago, not directly to cold calling, but I think it applies where you give other people permission to be wrong, right? Like you don't need to be so emotionally attached to them where they have to validate you. You can just, all right, he yelled at me. He thinks I'm a loser. He thinks my business model sucks. He has permission to be wrong. It's okay. Right. Like I don't need them to validate what I'm doing. And, and I think for individuals, sometimes that can be really hard, right? It's hard thinking that people out there disagree with you so much that they're so offended that you would call them to ask them about their house. Right. I've had people, how dare you send me a letter in the mail? <laughs> right. Why would you do that? I don't have my house for sale. It's like, that doesn't, that's not a problem with me, right? That's a response from them and their responses don't dictate what I do, right? Cause I know one dude's gonna, gonna answer the phone. I had this happen. Uh, we did a cold call. We bought a, we bought a deal from a lady on Henry street in Muskegon, Michigan. We called her and she was like, who is this? It's like, Hey, you interested in selling? Yeah. It's like, yes, I need to sell. I was like, okay, well, what's going on? Well, I'm trying to buy a house this coming Wednesday or I'm going to lose it and I don't have the money. So it was like, I think we had 10 days from her deadline. And by the end, she's like, thank you so much for calling. We closed the deal. I ended up closing and selling it. I think I made, I made $14,000 in like eight days. We made it happen. I wholesaled the deal, got the whole deal done. But at the end, she's like, thank you so much for calling. Because I don't, I wouldn't have been able to buy this other property if I didn't have the money to go that. And this property, there's this huge hole in the roof and it was a problem, right? She didn't know what she was going to do, but it took getting through all those other people that your client, my client that I'm looking for, that older individual who's owned the house for 20 years, that's had it, like they want me to call and they want someone who's really going to solve their problems. And I think if you can think about that, that all these people who say no, they're not the person I'm looking for. They're, I'm not looking. I don't care. I'm not looking for that guy. I'm looking for the old lady who's sitting there like, I don't know what to do with this house. And then I can walk her through it. So I hope that helps. I just wanted to say something real there, Ken, also, is if you're not failing, you're not succeeding, you're not moving forward. So you have to look at failure as a learning experience. You know, you're going to get to a point, even when you start getting past this and you're getting back on making calls, when you're going to send some offers out to somebody, you're definitely going to get some yelled at people yelling at you when some of these offers. So don't, you just got to let it roll with you and it's part of the game. So just, just it is what it is and just take it, you know, it's it's just move on to the next one. That's all it is. It's just a numbers game. So, but I do want to um, ask, um, Marty, uh, a question here. When you talk to people, when you're making cold calling, do you strictly stay on the business aspect of it or do you get to know them a little bit on a personal level? Do you kind of go down that road? You know, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. And part of it is like Ronnie said, you want to be, you want to get into the business right in the beginning, right? So as soon as they are even going to like open up about the property, then we can start asking the questions of the property. And, but what happens when you're asking the questions is you're building rapport. So you, people kind of talk about, I've, I've had people reach out like, how do I build rapport? Like, how do I build rapport? Well, it's asking questions. And even if it's just, you know, how's the weather there, right? Or so tell me about what's going on with the property, right? Just kind of just very basic questions. You're going to build rapport and through the rapport building or just through their answers on the questions, they're going to open up and give you stuff. Okay. They're going to give you information. Well, that was aunt Sally's house. And, uh, 
man, we haven't been there in three years. Oh, what happened? You know, what's going on? Yeah. Well, you know, there was a problem, you know, she got divorced. Da, da, da. Oh, there was a divorce. Yeah, there was a divorce. It was my uncle's bills. And then they, moved. so then they're going to go into all this information. And now you're just, you're, 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 you've been there since the start. You've been there since the beginning. You've always been there to help them. Right. And you're really just walking them down uh, really a plank. If you think of it like that, you're walking in, you know, you're walking down a plank and you get to that final question, which is, well, if we send you the contract and we could agree, can we do business today? And now that push off the planks a lot easier when you've already built up all that rapport, all those questions, all that time with them. You've been able to kind of get out a lot of their frustrations, a lot of their problems, have them feel those problems. You know, when you're asking these questions, these these probing, painful questions, it's really you're hitting them with some real, you know, real things. And, and that's good because you want to make sure you're getting to the problem on, on why they should sell it. But not just that, but why they should sell it to you, because you're the one that's going to solve it. You got the problem out. So now you can solve that problem. Right. That's our goal here as salespeople is to find a problem. Right. Because they're not going to give it to you. You have to ask the questions to get the problem and then figure out a way where you specifically are the unique person in this world that's going to solve that for them. And that's how you change your life is by doing things like that. And it's changing their life, too. So, yeah, that, that's really important is to build the rapport. You do it through the questions. That's great stuff. So I was going to ask that question about like Ronnie mentioned two things I want to talk about. He, so I want to, I think we should go into a little deeper, like storytelling and then also like the situation and Marty, you were just kind of talking about that once Marty, before we go um, talk about the situation a little bit more, give an example of like somebody that, you know, that how you solve the problem. And then we'll go to Ronnie and ask him about storytelling. Sure. Absolutely. So solving a problem though, I, I have to say is you're going to solve problems through stories as well. So Ronnie, I might jump on this one here because, but I, I know, I know you're going to be able to add, your okay, own, I know you're going to add your own flair. Yeah, go ahead. So, you know, one of the things that I do and a lot of people kind of think they're doing it, but you, you really want to do a, what's called a third party story. And what a third party story is, is you're telling the story from someone else. Cause you guys got to think about when you're in the sales over the phone it's not necessarily what they don't really believe me, okay, Marty at Upstate Home Buyer, but they're gonna believe Sally at One Two Three Main Street, who I just helped. That's who they want to hear about. They don't care about me. They want to hear about Sally and her what happened to her. So I'll say something like this, Mark. Here's an example. All right, I'll say, Mark, I know you're obviously looks like you're going through foreclosure. You know, I, I got to be upfront with you. I actually just worked with a seller. I'm not going to say her name, but she's on one, two, three main street. Do you know where that is? It's right up. Uh, yeah. It's across. Exactly. It's in, it's in, in Rochester. Yeah. You know exactly where it is. So one of the things that was her problem, she goes, Marty, I can't keep up with this anymore. She goes, I can't do the plowing any longer. She goes, the mortgage was one problem. She goes, but now I have all these other deferred maintenances I can't take care of. And I'm sure Mark, that's gotta be the same for you. Right. It's not just the mortgage anymore. And so I am just relating that story to them because, again, they want to hear what's going on. Okay, you've already helped someone in this exact same experience. You've already done this before with somebody else. Awesome. So I know you're going to be able to help me. So I really like to use third-party stories. And it's like, and here's what she told me, Mark. She said, Marty, I am so done. See, I'm saying my name. I'm saying my name because that's the third party. I'm talking out of my voice, but I've, it's Sally who's talking. So she would say, Marty, I am just so done with this house. It's been a problem for us. It's a huge pain, and I need to be done with it. And Mark, I know that's probably the same for you. And now I'm assuming it's the same for Mark. So I'm third-party storytelling through somebody else, and then I'm assuming and tying it down. That's what a tie-down is. I'm tying it back down to Mark. Now, is that the same thing for you, Mark? Right. So now I'm going back. So I'm storytelling and then I'm going to tie Mark back in saying, now, is that the same for you? Are you is that this, is that a similar experience you're going through? Right, Mark? So now I'll even say right to make sure they go right or yes. And you can you can kind of hear them just go, 
wow, that is what I'm going through. So when you do that, it's not every time you're not going to, they might tell you, well, it's not actually that Marty, it's this, that, and the other. And now I can go back and use that, this, that, and the other from a different story. Okay. Well then it's probably sounds like Jerry at four five, six South street. I just worked with them and that was a, that was a probate situation. You know, mother died, had a huge credit card bill, couldn't really take care of the property anymore. And she goes, Marty, we just need to make, we just need to move on. We can't deal with it anymore. Is that the same for you, Mark? Yes. That's the same for me. Okay, great. Well, here's, let's do this. Let's find a time. Let's get out there. Let's talk about it. Let's meet. So I'm a big storyteller. I think it's the most important part of the sales process is storytelling through other people's experiences. I know that's a little long winded, but it's important to know the difference between a storytelling and storytelling and then third party storytelling. Ronnie, what are your thoughts? I love that. I, I think what you said is it's absolutely killer. Um, I think, I think what we miss as when we're in the deal and we're new is we're not trying to be people's friends. I did this for a long time. I, I, when I first started, I, I wanted to be friendly with them, right? I wanted them to, I wanted them to like me. <clears throat> think back when you're dating, right? <clears throat> or you guys who are dating or not married and you're out there, you know, trying to, trying to meet a girl and, and you're connecting and, and you're just, you're trying to be likable. Right. And then all of a sudden you get put in the friend zone, right? It's like, oh man, that's not what you want. Right. Cause you're not, you're not being credible. You're not, you're not being authentic. You're not sharing what you want. Um, and I think, I think the, the benefit of the stories going back is you're able to clearly communicate um, like the story is a vehicle to communicate either a value or what you are, what you're going to do for them. And, and that's why it's so powerful, right? So as you're asking questions, as you're re-summarizing, when they say, well, what about blank, right? Well, hey, Ronnie, you know what? The owner finance deals, can you guarantee you're going to make my payment every month? I don't want this house back. And I could say, no, Mr. Seller, I can't guarantee your payment. And now it becomes a roadblock. Or I could share a story. I could say, you know what? That's a great question. Okay. So here, here's the reality. We buy owner finance properties quite often. Um, I've got a number of them around. I've done, I've done over 200 owner finance properties in my career at this point. Here's how this works. So I'm making payments to banks. And then I have sellers buying from me. So here's what happens. Imagine that... 150 of my people are at the Dallas stadium and they're sitting at the Dallas game and a comet comes out of the sky and it smashes into the stadium and it burns down and everybody dies. Okay. Well, now I've lost income on 150 houses. I am unfortunately not going to be able to afford making all those payments. And so I'm going to have to make some business and financial decisions and I'm going to reach out and I'm going to try to figure out to work it out and I'm going to make it work. But that is why I can't guarantee it is because there's no way to predict a tsunami hitting the coast of California. And what it does is in their brain, they're like, oh, that makes sense, right? That's what they're saying. And you're like, so in all reasonable estimation, I'm going to make your payment, but I can't, I can't control the marketplace. And, um, and what you're doing is you're just answering their questions instead of saying a statement that can, a hole can be poked through. You're just painting a scenario, and uh, and I I really like that uh, that side. So I think that's good when it kind of circling back to cold calling and talking about that yeah. when we're dealing with people. Uh, Mark, did you want to? Did you have something? No, I think that was great stuff. Uh, you know, you guys got writ, writ in there. Um, you know, something I just want to kind of give a, a little bit how I do my cold calling and how it works is so. And Ronnie, you had said something earlier, and this is so key, and it really um, makes my cold calling so much easier. Is and uh, and somebody, I think I don't know who told me this, but you always want somebody to kind of pre, if you can afford it, if you can't, and you're new at it, it's kind of hard to do this. But I have a VA, and I have somebody speak to the seller first and get some. Base 
basic information. And with Mark, he's been doing this you know, in real estate banking since 1995. He knows exactly, just like what Ronnie was saying, you're, you're almost like your own employer, your own VA is actually almost setting up like a referral for you. How many times have you talked to somebody looking for a handyman or something and you've always gone with somebody that's a referral because they talk highly of it? It's the exact same process when you're making, when you're doing cold calling. If you're a VA or you have somebody there that's, you know, you know, getting you, making you sound like you're know what you're doing, which you do, um, you know, it really makes it so much easier. And then what I also do is we also use Calendly link. So we go ahead and they set up a time. Okay, Mark, what's, what's a good time for you, Mr. Seller? When, when can Mark call you back? Okay, 6 p.m. tonight. Okay, perfect. So they'll go ahead and set it up at 6 p.m. And then on my Calendly, it will send out text messages to the seller Hey, Mark's going to be calling you in an hour. Mark will be calling you. So they know my call is coming. So it's already, already warmed up for me. So it's a little tip. That's kind of what I do. And it's really changed the cold calling. Let your VA do a lot of that. And, um, and hey, VAs, they take punches as well. So that's part of the game. Um, but great stuff on that. Um, what about like, you know, the sellers? You guys talk about also finding out the situation. Like, how do you feel about like sellers? I'm going to go back to uh, Ronnie on this one with the sellers holding their cards, you know, trying to get them to open up. Because a lot of times, you know, in the first phone call, they're not really sh telling you the truth of really why they need to sell. That's a great question. Um, I think our response, my response in the past, let me put it that way. I don't know everyone's response. My response in the past was to try to explain why I'm looking for information, right? Like, hey, like, can you do this or where are you at? And then you kind of avoid what the real issue is or the real question. Um, what I have since done that's been very effective is just be very direct. And then if they pull back, pull back with them. I'll give me an example. Hey, Mr. Seller, what's the asking price? I don't know. Give me an offer. Okay. Um, are you looking to sell or no? Well, I, I, I'm, I would take an offer. Okay. I'm not really in the business of giving offers. I am wanting to buy a property. It sounds like you're not ready to sell. Um, you want to call me back when you kind of get a price in mind? See how I just pulled back? Like now I'm not explaining. It's just like, uh, okay. I'm not pushing when they threw up a wall. And what will happen is either they will break and be like, no, nah, I just really don't know the price. We do want to sell or they're going to be like, yeah, no, no, no. And then they'll get off. So I think when it when you hit that initial wall, a lot of us just want to keep being positive and like, OK, well, what about this? What about this? And really in their head, they're saying, dude, this guy's whack. Just whatever. They're going to say no, no matter what, because um, you could say a million dollars and they're going to be like, no. Right. Like. You could say 700, you could say 500. You, it doesn't matter what the price is, right? So I think a lot of it is just getting the expectation and reading the other person. Um, we have a comment from Ken. He said, is there any good books on communication and sales? Uh, there's a ton of good books on communication and sales. Um, I think my, my favorite book um, for real estate uh, is going to be never split the difference, I think is a really, really good one to start with. Um, never split the difference will give you a lot of just techniques and very practical and things you can immediately add to your arsenal. Um, I would start with that one and then I would do pitch anything. Um, pitch anything does framing and then objections by Jeb Blout. Um, those are the ones that I would jump into initially. So um, Marty, do you have anything to add to that? In regards to the, the books or the- uh, Either one, either one. Yeah, where to get information. I never split the difference, but certainly there's, you know, real estate specific or wholesaling specific questions that you're going to get that you can, you can find on YouTube. And, you know, really, guys, the best way of learning is by doing it, right? We get a really kind of- we really start to rack our brains on how to become the best sales. It's by going and doing it and actually calling and, and getting your own stories. Right. So you could use my stories. You could use Ronnie's stories, Mark's stories, but what you want is start getting your own stories and how you get your own stories is by just going out there and calling. Right. And, and one of the things, and I've said this before is that you're going to learn a lot through cold calling. You're going to talk that landlord who 
who, you know, beat up Kennebec on the phone, you know, there may have been something he gave you in the it, beforehand, right? There, there, so, so just a take, not, not, nothing that you did wrong. Like he was going to hang up on you regardless, but maybe there was something you could take from that conversation so that when you talk to your next landlord, you could bring up, you know, maybe it's, I listen, maybe it's like in Rochester, the eviction problem, this guy hung up on me, but then I use, I go, Hey, it sounds like you're probably having some problem. Are you having a problem with the eviction? Like a lot of the other guys are I'm dealing with and talking to. Yeah, I am. All right, now you got it in and now you can talk and you can. So, so that's what I'm saying is like, you can, you can learn a lot from the cold calling. You can learn a lot about the business. You can learn a lot about the industry through cold calling. So yeah, that's what I would say is, uh, is really read some books, right? Great. Good stuff, but get on the phone and, and, and take some action. hundred percent, hundred percent. And I think, you know, when, when you're doing that, so the next step after you, after you start cold calling and you start learning, is really okay if this is going to be a consistent channel how do you systemize that cold calling right and once you systemize that cold calling that's creating a lead gen that's creating a lead gen output and one of the things with lead gen and marketing now we've talked about marketing in the past so go to itunes or go to our youtube channel um, and look at it because we've talked a lot about the marketing channels and building that out and cold calling has been a part of that and look for the marketing and the lead gen sections because that'll we really dive deep into that But when you're talking about cold calling, you want to be able to say, okay, this is what we're looking at, right? This is what it looks like. This is what I expect from a cold caller. And this is what a lead looks like. So that way you can clearly communicate what that lead looks like. And you can go from one cold caller to five, right? And then once you have five cold callers, now you have a consistent lead flow where you are having it handed off. There's another book called Predictable Revenue um, that talks about that process, right? Having a lead come in and you analyze it. And from a cold call perspective, being able to know what is the conversation happening on the cold call and how is it being passed to me once I'm handling the leads when you're at that step. And I think as you're growing and as we're growing as business owners and closers, specifically on the phone is understanding the source, the the customer that we are interacting with, right? Who are the people we're cold calling? Are they landlords? Are they people in foreclosure? Are they, um, you know, whatever the leads that I'm getting, who are they and how can I talk to them? Are they direct mail? That's a different experience than a cold call, which is a different experience than someone online, which allows you to talk to that person directly, right? Because think of how powerful it is. If I can say, Hey, Mary, um, I know you spoke to my assistant the other day, one, two, three, you're, you're located right over by the elementary school over here, right? Immediately, they're like, dude, this guy knows exactly what's going on, right? Being able to drop those specific nuggets and know your client on cold calling is so powerful because remember that, that thing in the back, back here that people are afraid of, they don't trust you. And the more things we can do to build trust, especially in cold calling, I think is what, what causes us to win. Um, Marty, I have a question for you. I think, I think there's because I think you do a really good job. How do you go from cold call one to close the deal? Right. How do you, so you cold call, which is a lead gen activity. How do you transition from that cold call into a closed deal? Are you trying to close them on the phone from that first cold call? Are you trying to set up another appointment? So we cold call. What is, I think a lot of people get started. If someone says yes, they immediately try to close the deal, right? Which isn't necessarily a bad thing to try to do, but what is, someone says yes. What, what is the next milestone? What are they trying to get to? Yeah. Great question. Because, you know, we might've gotten in our past a little bit antsy in our pantsy and tried to close right then and there. And, uh, you know, there may have been some, closings that have occurred that way. Right. But to be the most effective we can and to, to do it, what we think is going to be a scalable way for our company is to set up another appointment. Truthfully, you know, it's to set up another appointment and say, thank you for your time. You know, I appreciate you guys. I know you got to run. I know you're busy. Again, it's a cold call. I don't know what the hell they're going into. They might be going to a meeting. They might be going to family members. I, I, I don't got time to close them right then and there a lot of times. Right. And I don't want to, 
have anything come up that might mess me up in that. So I want to set up another appointment with them and say, listen, it, it, cause that is another way of, I'm also guys that what I'm also doing is I'm, I'm figuring out, is this somebody that is going to take the next step with me? Right. So it's a good, um, it's a good way of qualifying. Hey, great conversation. I enjoy talking to you. I want to learn more, but I want to be respectful of your time, Ronnie. Could I set up another five, 10 minute time where I could ask you some more questions and we could see if they were a good fit for each other. Right. And that's been very effective because now I'm being respectful of their time. And I also know if they say yes, that there is a pretty solid interest, you know, in that first one, they could have just been nice to me. Right. And that's great. But I, we, we, we needed to take it to the next step. So yeah, we, we like to set up another appointment and then talk a little bit more. Um, and then from there, what we like to do is uh, we, li- we like to get out there. Now we're not doing a lot of virtual wholesaling. We're just doing everything right here in our you know tri-county area. So we can kind of go a- everywhere, my partner and I. So uh, we like to set that up and, and get out there and, and take a look at the property. So that's really the next step is asking those questions. And from those questions, scheduling a time for us to get out there and take a look. That's really good. That's really good. <laughs> Great stuff. Great stuff. I, you know, um, I, I do the same thing what Marty does. Um, you know, hey, I'm going to get with my partner and uh, we're going to do some due diligence on it and see if it's going to be a good fit for us and for you as well um, and plant the seed. So it does. It shows the initiative that they're really into it. But, uh, you know, another thing, um, you know, if you guys want to go over to PowerPlay uh, YouTube channel, we have a lot more uh, podcasts and videos that we've talked about, you know, how to talk to sellers. So if you want some more information, I'd definitely jump over there and check it out over there on the uh, PowerPlay YouTube channel. So it was great stuff. Uh, really good stuff, gentlemen. Well, hold on. I, re- I really know that Ronnie's got a unique way of doing this too, because, you know, when you get to another level, like Ronnie's level and, and what he's got with his business, they, they do something unique. So Ronnie, I know there's like a pass off that you guys do as well. And I, I'd be curious to, to know a little bit more. I'm sure the audience would too. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to try to do something fancy here. See if this works. Oh, it's not going to work. I was hoping I could press a button and it would share my screen. Boo. I was hoping I could do it. I could draw it out. I'll set it up for next time. Okay. Um, so from the pass off standpoint, you, what you want is, and what, let me rephrase that. Creating a pass off system allows for scalability and it allows for team building, right? Because what you're doing is you're isolating jobs. So if you can have an opener, someone who will open the call for you, right? So that way you're having, I had 10 cold callers at one point and there was a million calls a week happening, right? Like that's a lot of freaking calls, right? So you have an opener that has an opener process. Now that opener process, what that allows you to do is it allows you to set up and have a handoff to someone who is job is just to close down the deal. And it creates a predictable cycle because it's like, okay, I have 10 cold callers. I'm going to get two to four leads a day per cold caller. Okay, sweet. So if I have 10 cold callers, I'm going to get 30 to 40 leads a day. Okay. Well, I know that we as a company have to talk to 45 people before we get a deal. Okay, cool. So that means I should be getting a deal every other day, right? If the leads are good. And if I'm not, I can readjust and tighten up my lead process, try to get better quality or work with my callers. So what you're doing is on stage one, it's outreach and outreach is to get to I'm interested. And then someone takes it from I'm interested to later. And that's how you remove yourself, right? You create the system. It's like, okay, I'm making this many calls a week. All right, let me put somebody else to make that many calls a week. I'm going to step down and I'm going to close their deals. So now they're doing it. I'm going to hire 10 of them. Okay, well, now I have too many leads for me to be able to close. Let me hire an acquisition manager to close the leads. Okay, cool. Boom. Now I got leads coming in. Boom. I got an acquisition manager and me are closing leads and I'm selling properties. All right. Let me get another acquisition manager up. Uh, okay. Now how do I train that acquisition manager? And now you can focus on training and that's how you can work your way out in a predictable way because your numbers haven't changed because if your numbers drop, you step back in, you're not just done. Right. And you can keep doing the process over and over again. So a lot of people just want to get out because they don't want to do the work. Don't do that. Delegate the work. 
What do we got here? So, Josh hey, P, my man. Hey, Josh, I hope uh, you're doing so great, Ronnie, maybe you could do a video of what you're um, and put it on the uh, Power Play uh, YouTube channel of what you're describing. Because um, if you if anybody's listening to this like on iTunes or something, and you want to see the diagram, maybe uh, Ronnie can do a video and post it over there afterwards. Yeah, I think that's I, I I'd, I'd love to do that. So what's this question? And we're 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 coming up, Josh. We'll we'll do this. I think. Uh, so do you find yourselves coming up against time crunch for the second appointment with people? That have spoken to others and may have another offer. If so, what do you do to mitigate that, or do you pass on it? I uh, I actually don't pass on other offer like people who say they have other offers. Um, I dig in and ask them why they haven't taken it yet. So I try to dig in and I try to really be. I kind of push them away slightly, and then I pull them. Hey, what are you trying to do? Right? What? Why haven't you taken the other offers yet? Okay, what are you looking at? All right, I might not be the best guy, but if I was in your situation, this is what I would do if I was you. What are you hoping to accomplish? How are you going to make your decision? And then I try to work as a, a as a counselor on them, Josh, um, and and reach out to me. I can I can do a video on that, right? How to do it when they have multiple offers on the table, um, and, and a lot of it has to do with rejecting them initially, and it makes you more attractive. All right, guys, we're coming to the end. We talked about cold calling today. We went over all the details. Um, we talked about creating a system. We talked about actually talking to those sellers. Um, we talked about outsourcing that to other VAs or other members and how to build out uh, a system of cold calling. Um, if you guys have other questions to dig in deep, send those questions into us. We want to, this, this is really just an intro to cold calling. We can go multiple sides. If you guys want to see that, just send the questions to us. We can talk more about it. Um, we also, as Mark mentioned earlier, we're on our YouTube. We also have the podcast. So feel free to do that. We come to you guys every Tuesday. Um, we'd love to answer your questions and deal with that. But, uh, until next Tuesday, guys have a wonderful week. Peace.